Good afternoon or good evening. We're, we are reconvening the uh, Budget Conference Committee. We're going to start off with our uh, issue number one, local public safety package. Mr. Soderberg. Drew Soderberg, Legislative Analyst's Office. The administration in January proposed $250 million on a one-time basis from the general fund to support jail construction. However, both the Senate and the Assembly rejected that money and instead proposed alternative packages of funding. If you turn to page six in your agenda, you'll see a table that depicts the packages that were put together by the Senate and the Assembly. Um, if you turn to page eight of the agenda, you'll see some uh, high-level comments that we have on the packages. First, we would note that there are similarities between the spending plans. Both houses propose to allocate nearly half of the, the funding to the same programs. However, in some cases, the houses differ in the level of funding provided to each program and or in certain implementation details. For example, the funding for drug overdose prevention services would be provided to the Department of Justice under the Assembly's plan and to the Board of State and Community Corrections under the Senate's plan. In addition, we would note that the houses provide additional funding elsewhere in the budget for some of the same or similar programs that are proposed to receive some of the monies in these packages. For example, both houses provide similar levels of funding to the California appellate projects. However, the Senate does not propose to provide any funding for this program from the package that it put together. Um, in addition, we would note that there have been very little details on how some of these programs would be operated. For example, it's not clear how the community service infrastructure grants would be administered or awarded. Accordingly, the legislature may want to uh, provide more guidance on how some of these programs would be operated or, as it crafts a compromise package, focus on established programs where there are fewer uncertainties related to the implementation of the programs. In addition, uh, despite the one-time nature of the proposed jail construction funding, some of the proposed funding would be ongoing. For example, $49 million of the Assembly's plan related to the judicial branch would result in ongoing expenditures. The legislature may want to focus its spending on one-time proposals. For example, the legislature may want to consider approving some of the new programs proposed in their packages on a pilot basis. This would allow the legislature both to limit the time length of the expenditures and assess well whether some of these programs would warrant ongoing funding in future budgets. I'd now be happy to take any questions you might have. Ms. Costa. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members. Amy Costa, Department of Finance. As, we, uh, as I mentioned yesterday during the Health and Human Services portion of the conference agenda, some of the legislative augmentations that were discussed as part of that agenda in Health and Human Services were funded by each house denying the administration's local criminal justice facility construction proposal of $250 million. Uh, that money is to provide better beds for treatment. We continue to support our proposal uh, for competitive grants to those counties that have previously received only a partial award or have not received funding. The administration does have concerns with some of the new grant programs adopted by both houses. For example, the community services infrastructure grants and the homeless youth and exploitation program. We have little detail uh, available that's been provided for us to evaluate uh, the use of these funds and how they would be distributed and whether or not they overlap with other existing programs. In addition, the administration remains concerned about the legislature's adopted proposals that require ongoing commitments in general fund spending. Um, I'd also uh, just note um, on the Workforce Investment Board proposal offered that the budget does include resources for this purpose of the roughly $400 million in funding provided annually for a broad range of state and local employment assistance programs. The governor's WIOA discretionary plan in particular includes $7.7 .7 million for local grants to accelerate employment for populations with significant barriers to employment and we'll focus projects on programs that target ex-offenders and immigrant populations. Thank you. Questions from the committee? Uh, Mr. Albert, uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I just have to reiterate the, my support for the administration's proposal on this one. I think the, uh, both the administration and the LAO had an excellent point when they point out that uh, the uh, variety of proposals that come from the Assembly and the Senate uh, are uh, many of them recurring and not one-time commitments, and I think a one-time commitment for a competitive grant program where in future years we can make informed decisions about how much extra money we have to spend and whether or not we want to continue to fund that program makes a lot more sense. So I uh, just wanted to make that clear. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Other questions? Senator Nielsen. I concur on that point, and I would also argue as well that uh, the jail funding is critically important. I made mention of that the other day. Uh, the actions of the legislature uh, have very, very significantly impacted our local jails, and we cannot shortchange them and redirect that money at other places in the budget. And uh, that's just a absolutely uh, critical if we're going to maintain <clears throat> the impacts and alleviate and mitigate for the impacts of realignment. So in terms of this budget, that's of paramount importance. And the uh, $20 million to our local police is also absolutely critical. Uh, for the same reasons, the impacts of uh, legislation that have impacted that such things as the homeless, the mentally ill, who now uh, are more impacting our community than before in no small measure because of realignment, and the problem with our at-risk youth, many of them uh, gang-related, and we need to have more intervention monies for those local programs. These are critical if we're going to address our public safety needs. Thank you, Senator. Senator Leno. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A question from Mr. Soderbergh. In the Department of Finance's proposal, were there any BCP requests, any substantiation, any explanation as to how $250 million was arrived at and uh, why the need is there, exactly what it's all about, or was it just we'd like $250 million? Aaron Edwards with the LAO. Uh, we, in fact, uh, recommended against the uh, approval of the $250 million proposed for jail funding uh, due to a lack of justification. Um, we didn't feel that the proposal included uh, any uh, adequate assessment of what the actual needs were in terms of the, the number of additional county jail beds needed or the additional uh, treatment and uh, medical and rehabilitation treatment space. Um, uh, we also felt that the proposal didn't uh, assess to what extent Proposition 47 may have mitigated some of the needs at the local level for additional funding. Um, I would note that after Proposition 47, the ADP in the county jails has dropped by about 10,000. Um, and so we thought, uh, we think it's important for any assessment of county jail need to include uh, an assessment of how Prop 47 has, has affected the, the needs. Uh, and then finally, uh, we felt that the administration's proposal didn't uh, adequately assess whether local, uh, locals had uh, looked at other alternatives to state funding for jail construction, such as measures they could take to reduce their jail, jail population. Um, like sen sentencing offenders to probation uh, instead of jail terms or using um, uh, alternatives such as uh, pretrial uh, release rather than uh, placing offenders in jail uh, pending their trial. So, um, so uh, bottom line is that we felt that there wasn't a, a lot of uh, justification of the need from the administration. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And relative to Senator Nielsen's comments, I think we have very similar concerns, and I think I'm speaking for the Assembly as well as the Senate proposals, that there are needs in our communities to deal with growing homeless populations, to deal with an untreated mental health population, dealing with troubled youth. But the question has to be asked, are more jail cells and beds the proper response? Will that attend to what the real needs in the communities are. And I think of each of our plans really as an attempt to build safe and healthy communities. And that's what the investments that we've offered are really all about. It's to keep our communities safer, to 
work with those who could potentially be committing crimes and to deal with them on the front end rather than on the back end. So I think we have the same goal. We often always have the same goal, save for communities. And I know that Senator Hancock and her subcommittee and in her policy committee have really been dealing with a lot of the suggestions that you've just made with regard to all of those who are taking up space in our county jails uh, because though they've never been convicted of anything, it's just pretrial holds and a variety of evidence-based programming that have proven successful in, uh, in some counties. And you can look across the state and see that some counties are managing their populations very differently and much more successfully than in other counties. And we really should be focusing on those programs that work and, and acting accordingly uh, from that bit of information. So I think some of your suggestions that you made reference to on page 8 with regard to one-time funding makes sense and also fold into some of the consistent messaging that we've heard from Ms. Costa and the administration and making sure that we're not duplicating funding elsewhere in the budget. So these are some good suggestions that I know that we'll be taking to heart as we consider find some compromise between the two houses. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Hancock. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, subcommittee number five looked at this for a long time. We had conversations about it. I think probably <clears throat> many of the folks in finance <laughs> sat through those conversations. Um, I'd just like to say... Um, you know, I've gotten interested in jail and prison architecture since I have spent the last six years chairing the Budget Committee and the Policy Committee on Public Safety. And um, many of our jails and prisons are very difficult places for anybody to be, both the staff and the inmates of those facilities. If I had my way, we could rebuild every jail and probably most of our prisons. Uh, it would be a jobs program, would put people back to work, probably keep people out of jail or prison, among other things. Um, and they would certainly be better places for people to spend their time. But, you know, the governor has repeatedly said we don't have the money to meet all the needs that are out there. Uh, so, all of us together, we have to make choices. And we have to try to make the smartest, most strategic, targeted, humane choices that we possibly can. And choices that will lead to safer communities and rehabilitated individuals so that they can take their place in their community and, um, and we can also bring our prison and jail populations down and, and have uh, safer, more secure people. So I, I very much also appreciate the administration's comments. Um, I have heard now anecdotally from many in law enforcement as well as other community members what we need, they say, is the infrastructure for realignment, the infrastructure for prevention and diversion. If you have no place, uh, no mental health beds or drug abuse beds for people to go to, if you don't have supportive housing to get people out of homelessness or when they're reentering from prison or jail, you are much less likely to be effective uh, in restoring them to being uh, fully active citizens. So I, I think it would be really good if we could sit down and work with the administration to look at what's one time only, what are the elements of both our packages, the Assembly and the Senate, that would lead to that goal of healthy, healthier and safer communities. Um, we've been calling them upstream investments um, in the beginning so that we don't have to 
usually spend much more money and also have people who've been damaged when, uh, you know, part of it is people, uh, we want fewer victims to be served and we also want to make sure that we effectively uh, can rehabilitate people. So I think that the ideas that we've put together are a great commend commendium and I hope that we can work together to put together a really good package. Thank you, Senator. Uh, let me just sort of echo uh, yours and Senator Leno's remarks. I think that, um, as you can see, most of what's in conference are issues where the Assembly and the Senate have um, differences, although slight as they are. Uh, this is one issue where we both agreed that the $250 million for county jail construction really wasn't necessary. We both agree with the LEO recommendation. Uh, part of the reason for agreeing is we did reach out to um, different organizations, different counties, to try to get a under better understanding of what some of the needs were. Um, obviously, if you are going to appropriate $250 million of construction funding, you would expect to have a plan back of what that money is used for, whether it's used to do rehabilitation, whether it's um, used to do seismic safety, whether it's used to do expansion of uh, beds or rooms. Um, I think we got back uh, a three-sentence letter that there was need. Uh, but as you could see, we wouldn't be doing our fiduciary responsibility if we took that um, for every line item that we have. So uh, based upon this um, really lack of information, and we did not feel it was appropriate to give um, a blank check to the state and to really allow them uh, complete freedom to potentially pour money down a black hole. Um, we felt that it was really better served to really uh, follow the governor's lead in terms of realignment and trying to figure out how to uh, move people away from jails and back into society. And we felt that we um, came together with some good, uh, very appropriate one-time uses that would not only not put the onus back on the jail construction, but really allow people and uh, an opportunity to rehabilitate, put the rehabilitation back into the corrections and rehabilitation uh, department. So um, with that, are there other comments? Senator Nielsen. Senator Nielsen, question. A question of finance. That's a righteous inquiry. Finance to the $250 million, what, what had the administration suggested would be the direction for the funding? Amy Jarvis with Department of Finance. Um, so first, I think while we didn't submit a formal BCP, I just want to address that point. Um, in our uh, governor's budget summary this year, we did provide a three-page summary of why we were appropriating the funds requesting um, or requesting the additional resources um, to hopefully finish out this program. There were 17 um, counties that we identified at that time that either had never received a, an award or only received a partial award. And what we're really trying to get at is the additional programs and services to serve the offenders that do end up in jail. Um, and I think we based it on, the, so the pot is divided based on small, medium, and large counties. And based on the counties that hadn't received funds, small counties are eligible to receive up to 20, um, large up to um, 80, and then the mediums were 40. So based on the outstanding, um, the counties that had not yet received funds or only received partial, 250 was our reasonable amount. Um, I would note the one thing on the pro, on the package, um, the alternative plan is the Napa jail construction. Um, and I think that we're open to considering some kind of a carve out or an exception for Napa County if that's a priority for the um, for the legislature. So I think we're open to that discussion as well if our 250 stays in play. Well, I'd attest to that. I don't represent Napa County or haven't for a long time, but I do know there are unique problems. But when realignment passed, was that not a commitment to the counties in terms of jail construction and an expectation? And then wasn't there a schedule set up for those counties and an application process for them? And your uh, request was based on that, is it not? 
I, I would say partially. So the, our first program started in 2008 um, when we added $1.2 billion in lease revenue. And then through um, 2012 when we did realignment, um, we did authorize another $500 million in lease revenue bonds. And it was certainly associated with um, our commitment to making sure that the resources were in place at the local level to support the population that they would now be serving. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly agree with my colleagues about rehabilitation. And this is an area I'm very familiar with. And one of my complaints about AB 109 was we moved all this population, realigned, if you will, but did not commensurately expand the rehabilitative resources in the community. And the individuals that were put out there were not rehabilitated. And I agree that local rehabilitation is superior to in custody rehabilitation, which has always in the state been wanting. Best efforts have been made, but it's been wanting. And it should have been a program of scaling up local rehabilitation, particularly mental health, and realigning as you had more community resources. Where we're at now is we cannot abandon the fact that some need to be in custody. And that must be addressed. And the scaling up of community resources. We can find agreement there but it does have to be a balancing. Thank you. Senator Leno. Uh, for either finance or LAO, just to make sure we're not forgetting our history here, in addition to the 1.7 that finance has just mentioned, there's also another half billion that we did for jail construction in 2014. So since 2008, 2.2 billion dollars for jail construction and now we're told that's still not enough but we don't have the details as to why it's not quite enough in addition of course as a result of realignment we all supported now over you correct me is it well over one billion dollars annually for operations of that huge expansion of jail beds so I just wouldn't want the record to show otherwise that we have been very much a partner with the administration, uh, oftentimes not uh, with full or free will, but we have gone along nonetheless, and these are not insignificant amounts of investment. We're very sensitive to the needs of the sheriffs and the great job that they do in our counties and in our communities. And then with all of this money, as a result of Prop 47, conceivably the population is actually somewhat reduced. So all of this money, more money, and the population is getting smaller. You're shaking your heads if you have any further response. Th that is correct. Um, the most recent data on the jail population is from last year around this time. And at that point, since Prop 47, the jail population had gone down by about 9,600. OK. Thank you. So I know we still have a lot to discuss, but We've, we've been partners, we'll continue to be partners. We just want to make sure that we're spending these rare, precious, in this case, quarter billion general fund dollars as efficiently and effectively as we can. Ms. Jarvis, did yeah, you have a... I did. I just wanted to, um, I, while I agree that Prop 47 has reduced the jail population, those are typically, typically the lower level offenders that weren't spending a lot of time, a long time or a long sentence in prison uh, or in jail, excuse me. Um, so we are trying to serve our longer term population and to the extent that the Prop 47 um, population declines have um, made space available in the jails, it's the space that could be repurposed potentially for these programs that we're um, potentially trying to address through our proposal. Um, I did also want to mention, I think, and maybe I misunderstood, but you mentioned that we have a billion dollars in jail operations that we're also funding through realignment. I'm not sure if I misunderstood that comment, but I, I think we're speak, you might be speaking of the realignment dollars and the community corrections account. And that's not specifically for jail operations. Those are completely local decisions that the community right. um, partnerships determine how those funds are allocated. And while sheriffs generally receive you know, a, a sizable portion of those funds, that's not a state directed. It's definitely a local decision. Great. Uh, I recognize that. And I also recognize most of it does go to the sheriffs. Senator Hancock. Yeah, just, just to follow up on that, um, 
I just wonder why the administration wouldn't give counties an option so that if they would rather have supportive housing or mental health beds, they could do that as opposed to only the incarceration option, which is limiting. Uh, also, there are some counties that bonded themselves and built their own jails. I have one county that did that, so they don't particularly need that. So if, if it's to help out the counties in addition to the couple of billion or whatever it is that we, that we give for realignment in general, um, it would seem to me that more uh, local option would be a good thing. Did you ever consider that, and what was the problem? I think so. I see. Well, I think here we're trying to adjust, address just kind of the tail end of the um, counties that haven't received funding or only the partial award. But setting that aside, I think we have other proposals in our um, in our um, governor's budget that address some of those needs. Um, our community, and I'm going to get the name wrong, the transitional housing program, where we're um, trying to incentivize counties to create new and innovative ways of serving our criminal justice population. So I think there are other areas where we're trying to make investments and of course our homelessness package which I can't, which I can't speak to at all um, but I think that there are areas that we're trying to invest in those populations and again our $20 million in police grants um, where we're trying to get at the issues at the front end recognizing that our answers aren't all once they're in jail or incarcerated. Uh, thank you. I'm, while, while I'm hearing quite a bit of um, agreement of the overall uh, vision and direction. I did want to get back to the specific um, item at hand. And the, again, the budget proposal was for a $250 million county jail construction uh, proposal. Uh, the Oftentimes we get criticized from a government point of view that we don't run government like a business. Your three-page uh, proposal for funding did not include a single line item for construction. There was no uh, delineation of what counties there would be construction. There's no delineation how many beds would need to be added or deducted or rehabilitated. Um, if you were, if I was hiring you to remodel my home or to build a jail, I couldn't do it because there was no proposal. So again, we are the budget committee and we have to look at the fiscally sound the fiscal soundness of your proposal. And there was not a proposal that was presented. There was a $250 million request for a blank check. And if there are any of the 10 members of us who are interested in giving a blank check, I think we could have a separate discussion. But that hasn't been a single item that we've really been um, interested in. So again, there was not a single specific proposal for any construction, for any county. It was a lump sum blank check, which we felt was not appropriate, was fiscally responsible. And also given the governor's philosophy around subsidiarity, and um, also going back to Senator Hancock's point about local control, uh, we thought, you know, we, Senator Leno and I come from a county that was hoping for an option of moving away from jail construction into other uh, particular options. So again, um, this is an issue that we hope to have uh, uh, ongoing discussion. I think the Senate, um, and the assembly, at least uh, the, in, in the majority party, we are um, in agreement that the $250 million um, should not go for a, a blank check of county jail construction and really would be better served in other purposes. Seeing no other comments, we'll move on to issue number two, uh, local law enforcement. Mr. Edwards. So this agenda item contains uh, three issues that are before you here. First, uh, the administration has proposed $20 million in one-time funding uh, for grants to city law enforcement agencies. This proposal was approved by the Assembly uh, but rejected by the Senate. Uh, we are recommending the Senate position here due to a couple of concerns we have with the proposal. Uh, specifically, the administration has not provided any plan for assessing whether the program is achieving its intended goals. And without such a plan, it would be difficult for the legislature to hold the grant recipients accountable for achieving results. 
Um, in addition, we are concerned that local policing has historically been a local responsibility, and it is unclear what role the state is uh, serving by intervening in this way. The second issue is a proposal by the administration to provide $5 million to increase the amount provided in 2015-16 for increased trial court security needs related to new courthouses. The Assembly approved $2 million, and the Senate approved $3 million. Uh, we are recommending the Assembly action here because, in our view, the actual needs uh, remain unclear, and the Assembly version has a smaller general fund impact. And then finally, the third issue is trailer bill language adopted by the Senate but not approved by the Assembly. Uh, the language would affect the operation of various uh, steering committees created by the Board of State and Community Corrections to allocate grant funding. In essence, this language makes it clear that local government agencies cannot receive uh, grant funding from a steering committee if one of its employees serves on that committee. We recommend the legislature consider uh, pursuing this change through the policy process. Uh, we understand the intent, um, but we're not exactly sure what the implications of this language would be. Um, it could, for example, make it more difficult for the board to find qualified individuals uh, to serve on the steering committees uh, and for it to allocate funds expeditiously. That concludes my remarks. Happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you. Ms. Costa. Thank you. Uh Quickly, I'll just go through our position since there's only three items in the packet. Um, on the city law enforcement grants, we support the assembly version, which is consistent with the administration's proposal on this item. For the supplemental trial court security courthouse construction, we don't support either of the proposals. The administration has concerns that the augmentations adopted by both houses are insufficient to meet the anticipated level of resources needed uh, to fund the higher level of service imposed on counties as a result of courthouse construction. And then lastly, on the uh, trailer bill issue regarding the Board of State and Community Corrections Executive Steering Committee process, uh, we, uh, we worry and have concerns that this would hinder the board's ability to form at the executive steering committee which, uh, with the appropriate level of field expertise, which is critical to the board's mission. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Costa. Uh, Senator Leno. Uh, 